Hello, everyone. Hi, Kasiva. Hey, Mina. Hello, Kathy. Thank you so much for uh, having us uh, at the Spring Summit. Um, we produced this song uh, a few years ago, and it was very exciting to uh, have this commission and to uh, re-collaborate online to share with you our music. Um, so we wanted to give you a little bit of a chance to understand what the Nile Project is about and to hear from Kasiva. So Kasiva, every song in the Nile Project has a story and Dingy Dingy certainly has a funny story. So can you tell us a little bit about how it came into being? Um, so thank you so much for having me, Mina. Um, as you said, every song in the Nile Project has an interesting story behind it. And um, as you saw in the beginning, Dingy Dingy was um, a song written by an Egyptian composer. And we thought, how about we write our own version in our own respective languages to own the song and sort of relate to it personally. And I think that turned out really great because see from Miha, the guy who was uh, playing the Egyptian drum, he's the funniest of us all. And he took the song um, and said, that the Nile is sort of like a human body and, you know, has human parts like head and, and legs. And I've seen Asia, who is uh, the beautiful lady in blue, who um, lives actually, actually lives in Cairo. And she says that, you know, Egyptians and Sudanese people are brothers and sisters, that they live as uh, one people. And I see the Ethiopian uh, beautiful sister of mine, Salamnesh, the one with big hair. <laughs> um, I see Salamnish saying that, um, you know, we can all share the, the the water of the Nile. And I see, you know, Salamnish relates this um, to her personally because, you know, because of you know, the building of the dam in Ethiopia and, you know, the struggle of who's going to have um, what part of the water and, you know, the Egyptians and who's going to have what part of the water. So I think Dingi Dingi is an amazing story and, um, it reflects what we think of as the Nile and how we relate as the Nile personally. I, 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 my verse, um, the one with the big hair again, <laughs> I say that, um, you know, we can stop this tussle and struggle and just uh, be one, you know, share this water equally. So I think that is how I relate with the water, you know, being in the source part, um, I relate to it, you know, in the sense that I've been with the Egyptians and the Sudanese and the and the, and the Ethiopians in the Nile project, and I've had the conversations that go on, you know, in between the musicians, you know, people talking about the struggles that they're having in their respective countries. The Egyptians scared that, you know, if the dam is built, you know, what is not going to get back to Egypt. The Ethiopians saying they need the electricity from the dam, and so on and so forth. So I think this is a story that you know really stems from very personal, uh, from a very personal relationship with the river. Thank you, Kasiva. So mm -hmm. the song uh, was originally written in Arabic by an Egyptian uh, songwriter and composer in 1918. And then we added verses in Tigrinya, which is one of the languages spoken in Eritrea, uh, another verse in Amharic, which is uh, the main language in Ethiopia, and then Kasiva, you sang in Swahili, which is the language of East Africa and uh, uh, primarily in Kenya, where you live. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your experience with the Nile Project. You joined the Nile Project in 2014, and you've been with the Nile Project now for seven years. And uh, the Nile Project is a collective of musicians, and every year we keep adding new musicians. So you've met so many musicians from the 11 countries that share the Nile River, and you've learned a lot about the water conflict between the different countries, as well as the history of the Nile uh, and the cultural imagination of the Nile. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how the Nile Project experience has changed who you are as a musician and how you see yourself and your work in the arts? Um, so uh, thank you for that question. Before I joined the Nile Project, I really did not consider myself as a Nile citizen because I didn't know what part that I played in the ecosystem of the Nile. And, you know, just getting into the Nile Project and having workshops and sessions where, you know, we discussed and learned, you know, what, I, what each country brings into the whole river. I started having an understanding of, you know, 
who what what role I play as a musician, but more more so as a Nile citizen. Um, hanging out and spending so much time with these musicians has truly impacted my musical life, but has also just impacted me as a human being. Um, as a musician, I now um, am more affiliated to um, styles of music and genres of music that are found along the Nile. Before I joined the Nile Project, I never used to listen to Egyptian music. I had never heard of, uh, I think, Ethiopian music. And now I'm a big fan. I will, you know, um, intentionally go on YouTube and search for Egyptian music, Ethiopian music, and Sudanese music and listen to it. Um, during the tours, when we went to Egypt, I got to sample, you know, the cultures and the way of life um, of the Egyptians and uh, the Ethiopians as well. I had never had Egyptian food before. It was amazing. I had never seen and touched e Egyptian instruments. And this was my time, you know, to dive in and just heal my curiosity fully. And um, I ended up carrying an Egyptian drum to Kenya with me. And now I use it in most of my compositions. And I also, you know, use it in, um, in bands that I play with here. People find it very strange, but this is my chance, you know, to keep preaching about the Nile Project, keep preaching about the influences of my music and where they stem from. Um, when we went to Ethiopia, um, we learned different scales, same as Egypt, you know, and um, there's just so much. I really cannot finish, you know, just to tell you what I've gained from the Nile Project and how the Nile Project has changed um, my musical ways. And just as a human being, I feel I'm more sensitive in terms of how I deal with water sources now, not just the river, but I'm more environmentally aware. Um, I'm the kind of person who will stop a person in traffic and tell them not to trash, just because I understand where that is going. And I think I'm, I'm just a better human. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a better human being and I'm a better musician, thanks to the Nile Project. Thank you. Um, so, you know, in the Nile Project, we always face the challenge of having equal gender representation and finding traditional musicians from these countries that are both male and female is always kind of a challenge. So we, we're always looking for female instrumentalists uh, that carry those traditions. And I remember both our musical director and I, when we found your application, we were very excited about having you because you're a percussionist, you're from Kenya. We haven't seen many percussionists from uh, some of these countries before. Uh, and then we were also excited to hear your story and your adventures about how it came to be that you are a percussionist and the challenges that you faced. Can you tell us a little bit about your story? How did you discover the drums? How did you learn them? And how did you manage to become a percussionist until today? Um, so I started playing drums when I was six years old, thanks to stories that my grandmother used to tell me. And from these stories, I developed a very keen ear of listening to sounds and um, sounds and textures from the environment. And consequently, I started translating what I was hearing, you know, on parts of my body, playing my thighs, my chest, you know, and everything else that I could find around me. And long story short, I that was the start of my journey with rhythm. Um, you know, when I was growing up, I couldn't see many women playing drums and I couldn't actually see many women in the music space. So that sort of um, pulled me back and uh, I had the feeling that I'm not supposed to be doing this. So I kind of hid it for as long as possible until probably that I couldn't hide it anymore. And I sort of, you know, subconsciously felt that it was not in my place to practice drumming or just to indulge in anything musical until when I grew up and I started doing research and I realized um, it's taboo for women to play certain instruments in Africa in general, and especially drums. But then um, it was really calling in me and it was sort of compulsory for me to play because I cannot be separated from drums. I'm the drum and the drum is me. And um, that was the start of the whole explosion per se. And um, it's been an interesting journey. It's been a difficult one. Um, I've had to spend a lot of time defending myself and proving myself to the world uh, that I can play, I can, I deserve the title percussionist and not female percussionist. 
um and that also you know sent me in the search of looking for other female percussionists and it was such a relief when i landed in the nal project and i found asia from sudan asia is a percussionist she's very strong will she's um a cheerleader she's the she's the person who tells you you can do it and there's no quitting and that was such a safe space for me you know to be able to mingle with her and you know share our stories and get a sister to you know hold me when i was feeling ah i'm going to fall off the wagon you know and so on and so forth um but it's been it's been an interesting journey because from all that hardship to a point where now i can safely say and i will say this in quotes i can sit on the men's table and 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 sort of um have conversations about percussion have workshops uh, about percussion have um a say in the percussion world and even get to a point where i can start mentoring now i'm mentoring uh young women and young girls in a group called motram music here in Nairobi and it's interesting because i see myself in them 8 years 10 years you know 20 years ago when i was still young when i was still struggling when i was still struggling to understand why am i not seeing women in the rhythm section why am i just seeing women dancing and singing um why are people looking at me weird when i appear on stage drumming you know now i'm able to answer those questions to them and i'm able to hold their hand and sort of you know provide a mattress where they can fall on and not hurt themselves so i'm super happy with the journey it it, it nothing comes easy <laughs> we are here and um uh, i think we're doing a good job right mina <laughs> right. yeah thank you for doing this work uh i have followed your work in Kenya and how so many women musicians looked up to you and were inspired by your work. And uh, when we were touring in the Nile Project, I always saw so many women come up to you and the standing ovations that you got every concert uh, were so inspiring. So uh, thank you for doing that work, Asiva. You know, at the Othering and Belonging Institute, uh, we're looking for ways in which artists can play a role in increasing a sense of belonging and breaking cycles of othering, uh, bridging in short and long bridges. And your work as a female percussionist who's empowering other female percussionists and instrumentalists, as well as your work with the Nile Project is a great example of that. Uh, from your perspective, people like you, artists who are invested in creating this kind of work and having an impact, uh, what kind of challenges do you face as an artist? What do you think you need support with uh, in order to uh, create that work, to have this impact, and to uh, be an artist that uh, bridges and that brings people together? Oh, cool. Well, um, when I speak of musicians, I speak for you know musicians like me who've had the opportunity to travel vastly. But also I represent the musician who's not been able to leave the country, who's still looking up to the bigger musicians, and even us who are still looking up to bigger and bigger musicians, you know. Um, I think, first of all, we need um, the understanding that culture is, is, culture keeps changing. And for that, for that reason, I speak for female musicians, because female musicians are sort of looked down upon like me, when I take the drum and tell the story of my people using, you know, the drum as a tool of expression, I mean, because of cultural restraints and, and tradition, then I'm not given so much the opportunity and people look down upon me or people look at me weird and people don't give me a chance actually to, to tell what I have to tell. So I think um, we need more understanding in terms of, you know, cultural and traditional approaches to, to art. Um, I think um, we also need uh, people or organizations to avail funding to artists because most artists, not every artist will, you know, find a stage or find an audience to perform to. But artists have so much in their minds. There's so many projects that are going on in their minds. And if given the opportunity to actually do them with a little bit of support, then you know work can be channeled out. So I think that's 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 a really really um, a strong point to look at. Um, I also think we just need general support from from our audiences. You know, in terms of you know when you go to gigs, 
support an artist, buy a merchandise, buy their music, you know, listen to their music, share their music, because through this, you know, you, you share their stories, you share their spirit, it, the, the music uh, flows, the music reaches everybody, and so on and so forth. There's so much that people can do for artists, Nina. Thank you. Thank you, Kasiva. Uh, thank you, everyone. If you're interested in listening to The Nile Project, you can find our music on Spotify. You can find it on our website, nileproject.org. And we'll be posting the video at the Institute's website uh, for Dingy Dingy, so you can uh, keep going back to it if you're interested. Uh, you can also learn a lot about The Nile Project from our expo booth. So, so, so feel free to uh, go to the Now Project Expo booth to learn about what we do, our uh, model of change, and uh, the way the work that we do relates to the mission of the Institute. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kasiva, for joining us today. And thank you for this beautiful song. Thank you, Mina. Thank you, everybody. And good night from Kenya. <laughs> <laughs>